today we're going to talk about three steps for turning social media supporters into offline donors. And I have with me a very special guest, uh, Joe Gorek from the Fundraising Authority. Joe is an expert in all things fundraising. And you can check out his website at fundraisingauthority.com. Uh, so welcome, Joe. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. This is something that fundraisers are constantly asking me, right? Because everyone's telling them, you got to be on social media. And they say, okay, but I have real goals to meet. So how do I turn my social media supporters that we've worked hard to cultivate on social media into long-term donors, not one-off donors, not quick $2 donors, how do I turn them? Is there a way to turn them into long-term donors to my organization? Now, I'm not someone who believes that you should be on social media just for the sake of being there, right? I, I, if your nonprofit is like most organizations that I've worked with, at least, you have an extremely limited amount of free time and, and resources. You know, you're understaffed, you're under-resourced, you're pressed for time. Uh, you don't have to be. Uh, you don't. You, know, you don't have time to be on Facebook just for the sake of connecting. Um, you you have real tangible goals that you need to meet, and one of your primary goals is to meet new prospects and move them down the funnel to the point where they make a gift. So once you get serious about your social media presence, chances are you'll be meeting and connecting with lots of new prospects on social platforms. So how do you turn them, as we said, into actual honest-to-goodness donors to your nonprofit? Many nonprofits assume that the best way to do this is to send out fundraising links on social media. I know that's something that when we, you know, I first started uh, testing the fundraising waters on social media, that's what I did. You know, we, you, you post some updates, you send out some donate now links. You kind of beg your supporters uh, on social media to donate, and then you wait for the money to roll in. A lot of times, you'll see these types of appeals accompanied by asks that say something like, "If each of our Twitter followers donated just one dollar this week, we'd meet our funding goals for the entire month." Sadly, as I found out, as far too many fundraisers have learned, making asks like that on social media rarely, if ever, results in a significant amount of funding. You may get some trickles, but you're not going to raise your goal uh, through, through, uh, through you know, posting updates like that. So, um, and, and lots of nonprofits who have tried and failed making those types of asks on social media, then they think, well, maybe viral fundraising is the answer. Maybe the only way to raise money through social media is to replicate the ice bucket challenge, to do things like that to incentivize people to give. I'm a big fan of viral fundraising campaigns, and I think they can be very successful, particularly local viral campaigns for smaller nonprofits. But the truth is that those are one-time fundraising efforts. Viral fundraising is not a long-term solution for raising money from your social media community. Over the past decade, as social media has become a primary activity that people participate on, in online, it's become clear that I, you know nonprofit fundraisers need an actual system for turning social media supporters into donors. And I've experimented with lots of different strategies with varying success, but I found the following three-step uh, process that we're going to talk about today to be the most effective. And the first goal which is probably going to surprise you because I'm immediately talking about getting them off social media, the first goal is to collect their email address, right? One of the most important steps in turning social media followers and fans into donors is getting access to your followers' email addresses. All right, I, 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 I've noted this, you know, in, in lots of our classes we offer and lots of things we do on the fundraisingauthority.com, being able to communicate with people through email trumps the ability to reach them through social media by a wide margin. One of the primary reasons in my mind why your organization should be online and on social media is to find new supporters and drive them back to your website where you can collect their email address. You see on your screen uh, a box that John has on his site to collect email addresses. Once you have someone's email address and you have permission to use it for sending your email newsletter from your nonprofit or to keep them updated, 
you can start to build a true active relationship with your followers. And we're not talking about spam, right? You, I'm not saying you should buy lists or even pay someone to track down the, the email addresses for your social media supporters. Well, you should only email them if they sign up to receive you know, your newsletter. The best way to collect your social media followers' email address is to send them back to your site often from social media where they're going to see your email newsletter sign up box on every page of your website and to directly ask them, will you sign up for our email newsletter or to receive a special report or another incentive via email? All right, you'll never collect the email addresses for every or even half of your social media followers, but that's okay. Be relentless in trying to get your social media followers to sign up for your organization's email newsletter. And then the second goal is to use that email address to build a relationship. Once somebody gives you their email address, you need to use it. Start by sending out a regular e-newsletter from your nonprofit. That newsletter should go out at least monthly. Probably, uh, you know, that's probably enough for most organizations, but it can go out more often if you have more to say. It should be well-written, mission-based, easy to read, okay? And your e-newsletter should form the basis, the backbone, of your online cultivation efforts. What you've done is you've moved people from social media followers to somebody that you can actively reach out into their email inbox uh, every month or twice per month or whatever it is to talk to them. And it doesn't need to be overly time consuming. You should set up, and you know, what I have organizations do in addition to their email newsletter is to set up an autoresponder for dripping out semi-personalized emails to people who sign up for your for your newsletter um, and you know you might send for instance an email a couple of weeks after someone signs up that says you know hi Sarah thanks for signing up for our email newsletter I want to personally thank you for your interest in our conservation society I'd love to learn how you heard about us if you get a moment let me know my contact information is below thanks again Joe uh, you know you're sending out in addition to your email newsletter some semi-personalized emails on an autoresponder system that more personalizes and more builds that relationship through email. Your follow-up emails can be short and simple. You know, if you're sending those autoresponder emails, I say don't format them, don't, you know, don't use color templates. For your email newsletter, you should. But for those individual autoresponder emails, um, have them look like you're sending an email to a friend, a simple text email and you can store a series of them that go out one week, three weeks, seven weeks after somebody signs up for your newsletter or whatever timeline works for your program and you know and and what makes sense and uh, most people you know obviously most people won't respond to those emails but some will some of your social media followers who are the most activated are going to respond to those autoresponder emails so you can be sure to carry on that conversation with those people uh, to continue building that relationship. And then, of course, the third goal, which is an email fundraising appeal. You've taken your social media supporters, you've driven them back to your website, and you've worked really hard on your website. There's no point doing that unless you're working really hard on your website to collect their email address through, through sign-up boxes, through actual asks, please sign up for our email newsletter. You've talked to them through your email newsletter and through some personalized or semi-personalized emails. And then to actually raise money, your, your third goal is to send an email fundraising appeal letter. All right, Email fundraising letters can be extremely effective at raising small and even on the smaller end of mid-sized donations from your supporters. So once a social media follower has been on your email newsletter for a few months, they'll start to feel a connection with your organization, more so than they had just by, by being a follower through social media. And uh, they, they'll, they'll be following you on social media, they'll be reading your email newsletters, and they'll be getting some of those occasional emails from your team. At that point, they're ready for an email fundraising appeal letter. Now, my suggestion is nonprofits should be sending out, as I said, email newsletters at least monthly I'm a believer, and this is not what everybody would tell you, but I'm a believer that those newsletters actually shouldn't contain any fundraising asks. They should be pure cultivation pieces. And then at least twice a year, send out a series of fundraising appeal letters, standalone 
email appeal letters that mirror in some ways <clears throat> you, you know a snail mail appeal letter though much shorter to ask for donations all right and like I said I mean real honest to goodness fundraising letters not wishy-washy half asks you know will you think about supporting our organization you know real appeal letters will you donate 50 100 250 or whatever you can afford to our nonprofit today to make this vision happen Email fundraising letters, like I said, are a little like those offline letters. They need to be focused on one thing and one thing only, and they need to be uh, letters that make a compelling ask. All right, um, they, you know, people don't give unless they're asked, and that's one of the big, one of the big issues uh, that nonprofits have when they're using this type of a, of a formula for moving social media supporters to email followers, uh, subscribers to donors, is that they think if we just send out those email uh, newsletters, they'll donate. And the truth is, um, that's not true. It needs to be that type of ask. Now, before we move over to questions, there's one optional little goal that I, you know, I don't have a slide for, but I'll tell you about that some nonprofits that have a real local donor base have used, and that's um, hosting some small meet and greet, introductory, point of entry, whatever you want to call them, group events and inviting social media supporters and followers to those events. Um, they're non-ask events. You're not selling tickets. You're not asking people for a donation at the event. You're giving you know, them the opportunity to meet your staff and giving you a chance to talk more about your work. And then following up, just as you would with any other uh, point of entry or introductory or non-ask event, to see who wants to be involved. Now, I still suggest, even for those types of events, that you activate people through email, meaning you want to move uh, social media followers to email uh, subscribers and then email them uh, an invitation to an event like that. <clears throat> you can send out uh, invitations to an event like that just through social media, asking people to, to sign up and come to an event like that just through social media as an introductory point to your fundraising process, but you need, if that, if, in order for that to work, you need a certain kind of social media follower, usually younger, somebody who's used to going to events, uh, or people who are used to going to events through social media invites. I've still found that it's uh, much more effective. You get a much higher uh, or, uh, attendance rate if you send those out through email first. So there you have it. That's my three-step system for turning social media supporters into offline donors. Social media, get them to follow you on social media drive them back to your website, get them to sign up for your email newsletter, cultivate them through email, and then send out an email fundraising appeal letter as a first ask to get them to donate to your organization. It takes time and effort, but this system truly does provide, I found, a new stream of prospects for your nonprofit. Brilliant. I love it, Joe. This is so great. You know, um, I, so this is the time for you guys now. You can ask any question. You have, a, you have the fundraising authority uh, live right now, so any question is fine. Um, but I have a question, Joe. So um, what do you say <clears throat> to the development director who boohoos this approach and says, oh, geez, are you kidding me? You know, all these people are going to do is they're just going to donate $10 here, $20 here. We need a lot more money. This is not going to cut it. What do you say to people like that? Well, first, uh, yeah, and, and you hear uh, you certainly hear things like that a lot. The first thing I say is, if you're looking for major donors, stop doing it through social media, right? It's not it's 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 the track record of fundraising through social media is not a track record of raising major donors. You know, you're not going to get a ten thousand dollar don uh, donation from someone you never heard of before. Um, just because they follow you on social media. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to raise lots of money through mass fundraising appeals uh, through social media supporters, that's really what we, you know, what we call a viral fundraising campaign. And that's great. And it works. And there are lots of organizations who run twenty-five or $50,000 viral campaigns or crowdfunding campaigns. Um, and raise that money, but it's either many times it's one-off or 
the truth the truth about vi uh, viral fundraising and crowdfunding campaigns is that nobody wants to talk about is that really successful campaigns don't happen just on the crowdfunding site they don't happen just on social media when we run you know when nonprofits I'm working with run crowdfunding campaigns and hit their goals I have them making calls to ask mm -hmm. people to yeah. go on there we put together a crowdfunding committee like it's a lot of work to raise that money there is no magic bullet in fundraising. My suggestion is that what you want to do with your social media supporters is you want to turn them into lifelong donors. And so you can blast out those fundraising links and hope that this one time you're going to raise $25,000 or whatever it is through lots of little donations. Or you can build a long-term strategy where the truth is you're going to raise more in the long run by building a real solid relationship, like any other type of fundraising. you got to build a relationship with people. It's hard to do through social media, but it, it can be the start of it. Mm. Okay, great. Um, yeah, because, you know, if someone donates $20, um, that is very different. Uh, almost like that's, um, you know, they may not donate $1,000 now, but, you know, who knows? If you continue that relationship, that person can – grow into a major donor in the future when they do have the funds, right? Right. Or a month or a monthly donor at a certain yeah. point where they're given twenty dollars a month every month. Exactly. Um now I have a question here from J Jennifer. Um Jennifer's asking, is there a way that you can find your existing supporter base on social media? Well, uh you know, I think that's uh something that's obviously hard to do. It's not it is not uh, something where you know most nonprofits are going to be able to go on to to you know launch a a new uh, Facebook campaign and throw in people's names and and they pop up real easily. What I always suggest is you know treat it like a campaign. When you're when you're trying to connect with your current donor base, your current support base on social media. You know, or if or if you're launching on a new social media site, you know, you decide we're gonna ha we haven't had time before, but now we're gonna, you know, try and make a play on Instagram, or Pinterest, or whatever it is. Um, treat it like a campaign. Say, okay, we are our goal will be over the next six months to reach out constantly to our donors through email, through mentions at events, through our website, through wherever to try and tr through other social media sites to get donors to who are connected with us elsewhere, offline or online, to connect with us on that social media site as well. So that's normally, in, in my mind, what is the most time and cost effective is just simply, you know, simply constantly talking to your donors about your presence on that site and asking them to connect with you and honestly give them a reason to connect with you, right? If you're, if you're, uh, if you're on a social media platform, and all you're doing is asking for money or all you're doing is reposting the same stuff that you post everywhere, you know, why would someone who follows you on Facebook, uh, you know, then connect with you, your, your uh, nonprofit's presence on LinkedIn if it's just the same content? So give them a real reason, something interesting, some reason why they should connect you with you on that new site as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so uh, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. The other thing, um, Jennifer, you can do is actually Facebook. Um, you can reach your supporters through Facebook ads. So you can actually create an email custom audience on Facebook. And uh, actually, I have more information on my website about that if you want to just look it up. But basically, what you do is you export your donor database and you import only emails into the Facebook ad platform and you can create an ad, um, obviously targeting those people. Uh, also, you can find out, well, how many of our donors are using Facebook? You can answer questions like that. And you can look at the overlap. How many uh, supporters are fans of our Facebook page? And you can look at various different audiences that you have and compare them. For example, our donor database versus our volunteer database and compare those two. Okay. Um, now, Mirjam is asking a great question, actually. She's asking, we are sending weekly email. Is that too much? Well, it, 
it's different for every it's different for every organization and different for every donor base. So I guess I would say it depends what your organization does and what you're saying in your email. If your email newsletter is kind of the traditional fund or nonprofit email newsletter for a small organization where you are really digging to try and come up with something that's you know even remotely interesting not to I mean I'm not you know that's having worked as the person responsible for putting together an email newsletter for a nonprofit that was just doing the same thing every week sometimes it's hard and if that's the if that's the type of organization you're working with um, every week may be too much uh, there are organizations out there for instance you know I can think of like a civic organization uh, that is constantly uh, you know, uh, a point of reference for uh, folks that live in a certain area with local events going on, things like that, where people really appreciate getting a newsletter every week. You definitely shouldn't be sending out a fundraising email every week to your uh, email list, but I think the real question is, um, do you have something new to share? Are your donors uh, and supporters, do they really appreciate the, the current frequency, you can look at things like unsubscribe rates and open rates uh, through your email <coughs> uh, platform. See if you know, p see if people uh, are subscribing at a, or unsubscribing at a higher than normal level. Try, test things out. You know, try try sending a newsletter every other week. Do the open rates go up? Do the unsubscribes go down? Um, so it really depends on your organization. And I, the usual rule of thumb I say is. Only send out an email. Send out an email newsletter every month, uh, if you can. Only send out. Only send out an email newsletter more than once per month if you have something to say. If you truly have something to say that your donors and supporters will appreciate. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. But I love your idea of um, looking at the unsubscribe rate. And um, you know, if Mirjam, it sounds like you have a lot of resources. So sending out a weekly newsletter—that's amazing. Congratulations, you have a lot of um, resources, and hopefully, you have something to say along with that. Um, it might—it might also be good to give your subscribers the option. You know, um, <clears throat> if a week is too—if if weekly is too much, why don't you choose our monthly um, option? You know, so weekly or monthly, and give people that option. You know, um, so let's see. I don't see any other. Oh. Here. Nope, I don't see any other questions.